Hey, how's it going everybody? In this segment, we're gonna talk about how to use loops in a better way than just putting them into your song and leaving them there. What I'm gonna do is take this loop that I'm using in this song right here, and I'm going to split it apart into its elements so that every kick, snare, hi-hat, synth sound, etc., can be on its own track. I'm gonna just go ahead, select my scissor tool, make sure my quantize is on 16th, and use quantize. Now I need to add a bunch of tracks, so let me just put four more tracks in here. Five for good measure. And first thing I wanna do is go over to my mixer and turn down the volumes halfway. They're on my other monitor, which you can't see. So we'll just go ahead and name these. Kick, snare, hat. We'll call that the blip synth, and there's a ride symbol in there, but we're gonna actually put our own in there. Okay, let me get the best zoom I can here for you, and let's listen to the loop by itself. Starting from the non-filtered part. Okay, right there, we've got a couple, we've got a kick and a snare that's clean, and we can sever the waveform like a surgeon right on there. Let's find that again. Okay, so we've got our kick. We've got that second hi-hat, another snare. I'm gonna go all the way out to the next downbeat. And there's a couple more hi-hats at the end that are louder. So some of these we're gonna be duplicating and some of them we're gonna throw away. So we've got our kick. It's gonna go up to our kick track. I need to zoom a little further. So this is gonna go up here. Let's reconstruct this loop in one, one little spot here. Okay, so these are kind of both hi-hat sounds to make sure we keep them in rhythm. And there's a snare to the second track. Okay, then the ride symbol comes in. And then these two hi-hats at the end. Okay, this little blip sound is gonna go on this track and I'm gonna glue these parts together for the hi-hat and reconstruct that because there's um, some parts that overlap the ride symbol, which we're not gonna be using, okay, down here. So I'm gonna zoom in. I know they go on the upbeat, and then the next 16th up before downbeat four. So I'm gonna copy one over there, and let's zoom in even closer, okay? So if I just hide the other half of that waveform. Okay, you can now make variations on the rhythm now that you've freed up other parts. Okay. I wanted this on the downbeat, but it didn't land there. Okay, let's get rid of this and see what we got. Okay, so we're missing a kick and a snare. We got another kick to be copied on the downbeat and another snare on beat four. I missed it, didn't I? Okay, now I'm gonna go into my pool and I'm going to look for a ride symbol. I think I know where I have one. So let me just grab that thing here. I think I named it ride symbol. Bam. Okay. We've already got the track ready for it. So I'm just going to drag it in. This is a long sample. It's from a live drum type collection. I'm going to drop it in the 
near the right spot. I always turn my events into part because I like to be able to click and zoom in and then get out so that I'm constantly looking at the arrangement window. Okay. I know on the original loop, which I like the way it goes, the first ride symbol came on beat three. Okay, now let's go and compare that to the original loop. Okay, it's just a different sample, different style, and you can go through a whole folder of ride symbols and find the one you want. That's like a 909 ride symbol that's been EQ'd and stuff. And of course, now that all of our tracks are separate, kick, snare, hat, synth, and ride symbol, we can EQ, compress, put effects on separately and or together. I wanna to put all of these into a group channel. So um, in case I wanna do some more leveling on these, I can without robbing myself of CPU power. But this these drums have already been processed through probably some outboard gear. When you see a nice peak like that, and then that fish wave, the energy gets pumped back up by the output gain of the compressor. That's why I usually use a loop, not because I can't program, but because sometimes there's sounds that have been processed through incredible outboard gear that I don't have and that some of us don't have and maybe will never have. And there's a reason people still buy vintage compressors and high-end outboard gear because it does things that software just can't. Otherwise, Every producer would just have a laptop and that's it. So what I'm going to do real quick is make a group channel and I'm going to put all these in there. Okay. So now when I go to my second group, cause I already had a group channel for the side chaining going on in here. So I'm going to take all these drum parts and put them into group two. and our kick. So when I grab this, turn everything off so I can solo that group. Okay, now I got that all in one group. Let's say I wanna put a reverb on that snare and I've got this free reverb here. It's floating around online. It's called Freeverb 2 and I can make that snare wider by running it through here. And of course, if we were just playing back the stereo mix of that loop, which inspired us and, and sparked this whole idea of this song in the first place, then um, we wouldn't have that individual control over that sound. So I was able to make the top end of that wider. And of course, if you're mixing down a whole song, you would spend more time doing things the way you wanted them in relation to the rest of the song. But now we have total control over the individual parts of uh, of that loop as where before we were just kind of married to whatever the kick was doing. Okay, and the loop rather. Now we can take the bass just out of the kick, add bass. Um, and there you have it. That's what you want to do. Anytime you do get inspired to use a loop, when possible, you really want to chop it up and put the separate parts on its own track.